uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm Kenki Tsunoda of Kyushu University. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank organizers, especially for Sasamo-san and Fukuizumi-san for giving me an opportunity of this talk. So today I'd like to talk about this topic, sharp interface limit for uh, so-called global Kawasaki dynamics. So this is a plan of my talk. So first I'd like to introduce the model, the global Kawasaki process. After that, I'd like to uh, examine several results. Uh, for the first topic is about the large deviations for this model. And uh, after that, I'd like to examine another topic, a derivation of so-called mean curvature, much by mean curvature from this particle system. And the main topic is, of this talk is this one, the sharp interface limit for large deviation rate function. So we recently uploaded our paper to archive. You can check from this address. And I think uh, I don't need to explain these parts because uh, this is, uh, these parts are just motivations to study uh, this part, and uh, these parts are purely probabilistic, but uh, this part is uh, purely analytic. So if you don't know about these models, I think you can understand from this part. But uh, if we, you don't understand these parts, I think you cannot understand the motivation to study this problem. So anyway, I'd like to explain these parts and to introduce several results, including uh, my uh, previous work. Okay, let me start uh, from the disc description of the particle system. So, in this talk, we consider a so called Glover cross dynamics, which uh, is a particle system, it, and each particle moves on a uh, periodic domain, TND. And dynamics have two parts. The first one is a uh, exclusion process, which is also called uh, Kawasaki dynamics. And fortunately, global dynamics appears several times uh, in the morning session. We consider these two different dynamics. So we superpose two uh, different uh, mechanics as follows. And the safe space is uh, just this one. So there is a uh, particle at site X, if there is a particle site, particle at site X, then we denote like this. And if not, we denote like this. And I think this notation appears in the previous talk, I think. And you are uh, already familiar with this notation. The dynamics is given by the following. So first we consider the symmetric exclusion process on a, for simplicity on a one dimensional segment. So there are several particles like this. So each particle can jump to the right or the left with equal probability. But uh, of course, uh, sorry, this particle can jump to the right to the left. But uh, this part, if there is another particle like this, so this particle cannot jump to the right. So this is a uh, well-known exclusion constraint. And each particle moves according to a continuous time symmetric simple on the mock. This is a uh, Kawasaki part. And we also have the Graba part, like this. So uh, Graba, part, Graba part corresponds to the uh, creation and annihilation of particles. So each particle sometimes uh, cre is created like this, while some particle is sometimes annihilated, like this. And uh, its, jump, uh, its jump rate is uh, uh, depending on the configuration around x. And uh, uh, so this is a generator description, but uh, it's not important because I think uh, this, this description will not appear in the latter talk. So, but the important thing is that the graver part is uh, determined by the, its jump rate, c at x. And uh, the exclusion part is uh, speeded up by n squared. It corresponds to the diffusion of particles. 
Uh, let me give you a concrete example of the jump rate C. So this is a bit, uh, how to say, uh, not complicated, but it's a little bit messy. But the important thing is that uh, this is uh, determined by some inverse temperature beta through the uh, hyperbolic tangent. So we denoted it by gamma, and it is parameterized by, uh, no, sorry, here, gamma and uh, gamma here, like this. So the important thing is that this jump rates correspond to the uh, nearest neighbor Ising model. So the, if we consider the Graber dynamics uh, only, so let us forget about the exclusion part, then the uh, corresponding uh, invariant measure is given by the uh, Gibbs measure related to the Ising Hamiltonian. So this is an important thing. So. so, and uh, let me explain uh, uh, motivation to study this model. So this model has been introduced by Dumas, Ferrari, and Lebovitz in uh, 1986 to study a very famous partial differential equation known as the reaction diffusion equation. So they uh, introduced this model to study this uh, partial differential equation from a microscopic point of view. And here, F is our, our force term, or usually called a reaction term. And reaction term can be uh, determined like this. So W is a potential of the reaction term, and F is a reaction term is determined, uh, it's given by like this. So we, we uh, take an expectation with respect to the Bernoulli measure, and we consider the, we uh, calculate the expectation of this guy, and uh, the, and uh, if we take a, uh, if we calculate the uh, one of uh, primitive uh, functions, then W is given by like this. So this is just a, a polynomial in law uh, at most deg with degree at most four. So you can easily uh, figure out this function, and the result is the following. So if we take gamma uh, to be one fourth, then the potential becomes a single potential. But if gamma is equal to one half, then this is a critical case, so it becomes like this, and uh, this is still a single potential. However, uh, it is degenerate, de degenerate at the bottom of the potential. If gamma is uh, larger than one half, then the potential becomes uh, a double potential. And we basically consider this blue line case in the <coughs> uh, in my talk. Okay, uh, let me explain you uh, the result by Dumas Feder Lebowitz more precisely. So to state the result, we need the uh, notion of the uh, density uh, determined from a uh, interacting particle system. So we define an uh, uh, MPK measure like this. So meaning is the uh, following. So for each configuration eta, we associate uh, the measure pi n, n in the following. So, so each particle has a mass 1 over n to d if there is a particle at site x. And we take sum in x like this. So this is nothing but the density uh, corresponding to uh, coming from a density uh, coming from a particle configuration. Here delta is a direct measure at our continuum torus, so the, our microscopic state space is embedded in a, a macroscopic domain, uh, the torus, a d-dimensional torus, like this. Let us recall that the generator, this is uh, our original generator Ln, but it is speeded up by, the exclusion part is speeded up by n squared, which corresponds to, to the Laplacian in the following slide, and Lz corresponds to the uh, reaction part. So let us note that uh, pi Tn, so we, uh, sorry, eta Tn is a Markov process on the 
configuration, configuration space, this one. So at the end is just a Markov process uh, determined by this generator. And we uh, substitute eta tn here. And resulting pi tn is uh, a lambda measure on the torus. So this is nothing, this is a to lambda. So uh, the mass federal Lebowitz uh, proves the following result. So, so we need to assume that uh, initial density is uh, described by some measurable function, rho zero. So let us assume that the uh, initial empirical measure converges to some measure which is deterministic, which is not random. And uh, it is absolutely continuous with respect to the uh, Lebesgue measure, and its density is given by rho zero. And then they prove that uh, the same <coughs> convergence is true for each t. And so this is, as I told you, uh, pi tn is uh, random. So this is uh, random. However, its limit is uh, not random. It is deterministic. And its density is described, uh, is given by the unique weak solution to the reaction diffusion equation. So this is a uh, precise meaning of their result. And usually this type of result is uh, called a hydrodynamic limit. And uh, this, because this the limit is uh, not random, so it is deterministic. So this result is uh, usually uh, regarded as a low of large numbers for the empirical density. So uh, if we establish the low blood numbers, so then uh, it is natural to ask the corresponding, what is the corresponding uh, large deviations? And, uh, and it is, I think it is uh, uh, first uh, studied by Kipnis and Ola and Barada, Kipnis, Ola and Barada. And let me explain the la corresponding large deviation result uh, corresponding to, uh, related to this low blood numbers in the following slides. So this slide gives you the definition of the rate function. <laughs> okay, let us uh, see the, this uh, definition. So let us consider the um, general evolution of density. So let us give a uh, de density evolution phi t x. Uh, yeah. So phi t x is just a function on a space and time, time and space, so, and. Uh, we first consider a functional jh. So it is given by this formula. So for each h, h is a test function. h is a uh, some smooth function on a space and time domain. And we consider this a bit complicated uh, integral. So. Uh, Important thing is that uh, this, and we take a uh, we take a Schuppmann in the in test functions, and S A uh, S is a uh, large deviation rate functional corresponding to the previous low large numbers. So uh, important thing is that uh, let us take the uh, uh, variation of this function. So let us take the here you can see the uh, weak form of the heat equation. If we uh, integrate by parts, then this becomes minus delta phi, and it becomes Laplacian phi. So it's nothing but the weak form of the heat equation. And here, you can take the, if we take the uh, variation, then this, com this h comes from in front of b, and this minus h comes from here, then we get the uh, this uh, here, this equation, because f is b minus d. So 
So this is a, a la, this is a large deviation rate function corresponding to the previous low large numbers. So of course the precise meaning is given in, in the fried uh, no 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 I don't cover the sense, but uh, let's, we have the large deviation principle for short, and this has been originally studied by Kipnis so Olavarda. Uh, Ola is sitting there. So they studied the large deviation problem for symmetric simple exclusion process. So they, uh, they don't have the graver part here. Then the resulting, large uh, resulting function is completely the same. Yes? <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> And after that, uh, Yonar, Shinya, and Randy and Varis studied the uh, large deviation problem for a Graber Kawasaki process, and the large deviation function is given by the previous one. And recently, I and Kraju Randy studied the same problem because uh, to study, uh, we, have, we wanted to study a stationary state. But and the large deviation principle of the stationary state in this paper, but uh, it is not in this paper is not enough to, for our purpose. So we have studied, we, we have restudied the same problem and we uh, restudied the large deviation principle for this system. And we applied in order to uh, obtain a large deviation principle for the stationary state of this model. And uh, as a related result, uh, Bruno, Kifinis, and Landim uh, studied the same problem, large deviation problem, large deviation principle for the zero energy process. But uh, there is some gap uh, on the uh, lower bound. It is recently, very recently, uh, full, uh, yeah, fulfilled by a part of their general theory. Anyway, we have a full large deviation principle for the zero energy process. And our target is a, a large deviation principle for the gradient type case, but uh, it is non-gradient case is also studied in this paper. These are related results to our problem. Okay, let us move to another topic. So it is a derivation from a so-called motion by mean curvature from this particular system. Okay, let us forget about the, uh, so this is nothing but the uh, low large number, so the hydrodynamic limit, as I explained to you. So if we consider a global Kowski process and its empirical measure, if we take n to infinity, then we reach the hydrodynamic equation like this. And it is easier to, uh, it is very easy to, it is immediate to obtain the same result with a constant k here. k is large constant, but it is independent of n. If we uh, add k, then k it appears here like this. Yeah. So you take this Erasian limit, so which is a hydrodynamic. Limit. Yeah. So then uh, I'm wondering, so maybe you introduce uh, this d parameter dimension. Yeah. So do you take some limit or some constraint for this d parameter to get this uh, hydrodynamic limit? And uh, there is no constraint. Okay. We can take. We can obtain for any d. Okay. But fixed, of course, fixed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. In this talk, d is always fixed. Okay, uh, let us forget about the particle description, starting from a hydrodynamic equation. So it is purely analytic object. So if uh, at time zero, if it is described by some, uh, uh, how to say, uh, hyper, gamma zero is a uh, uh, smooth hypersurface, something like this. In 2D case, it is just a curve, cr simple closed curve smooth curve, and we if we take a, a step function as an initial profile, 
And if, and let us consider the solution corresponding to this initial profile. And if the, we take k to infinity like this, then uh, at time t, it converts to the, the solution to this equation converts to the step function described by gamma t. And gamma t is given by the so-called motion by mean curvature. So let's see this picture. So gamma, for each time t, gamma t is just uh, nothing but is just a simple closed curve in 2D case. And at each point, its movement is given by the, this equation. So V is uh, inverted normal velocity, and kappa is uh, uh, mean curvature. So uh, at each point, the inverted normal velocity is given by the mean curvature. So this is a uh, well-known motion, known as uh, uh, motion by mean curvature, or the uh, mean curvature flow. And our result is uh, something like the following. If we take kn like this, if we take k is diverging like this. So, and we can take uh, this limit simultaneously, then we can directly reach the motion by mean curvature from, uh, uh, from um, interacting particle system. This is our previous result. So this slide uh, explains uh, some uh, some related results. Uh, I think this, uh, these papers are first uh, studies about this reaction. I think this is the first one, but uh, this one is uh, published from the uh, latter one. Anyway, uh, these papers study the uh, previous problem. Recently, we have studied with Professor Funaki, we have studied the same problem by using so-called entropy method. Because entropy method is much more robust than these methods, so we want to study this problem much more generally. And uh, after this work, uh, Elketa, Nifunaki, and Hill Horst, and Park, and Suzurama, they study the same problem for the Graba plus zero-inch process. And the uh, difference is the following. So it is the linear diffusion is not linear. It is quasi-linear like this. And this P is determined from the uh, microscopic interaction of this process. After that, we also applied the same method to, to, oh, to uh, discuss uh, for a uh, Graba plus gradient Kawasaki process. And we have uh, justified uh, this limit by entropy method. And uh, again, this limit corresponds to the row of large numbers because this is this process is random. However, this limit object is not random. It is deterministic. So this is again regarded as a uh, row of large numbers. And I'm interested in uh, corresponding large deviation problem. However, at the moment, it, it is very difficult for me. So uh, to attack its problem, we studied the same problem for the large deviation rate function. This is a uh, uh, background of our study. OK, let us move to the main part of our study of this presentation. So uh, I want to take, I want to explain your sharp interface limit for the large deviation rate function. First, we consider uh, uh, large deviation length functional, functional corresponding, to the, corresponding to the Graba plus gradient Kawasaki dynamics. But it is very easy to see. So we just generalize here and here. So this is uh, diffusivity, and this is the sigma is uh, mobili uh, how to say, um, yeah, mobility of the system. And then we take a suprema, uh, as we did in as before. Can you just hold the 
Kawasaki, you still using invariant uh, product measure as invariant measure? Or yes, uh, yes. In the case of the uh, E, yes, gradient end, yes. But V is just start from this rate function. Of course, and we assume these conditions on these functions, P, B, D, W. Actually, these functions are determined from a microscopic uh, particle system. However, we don't need to start from the particle descripti description. We just start from this condition. And these conditions are satisfied in a certain case if we start from a microscopic system. So uh, P0 is equal to 0, and the P prime is not uh, zero, that it does not vanish, so it corresponds to the uh, non-degeneracy of each particle. And we also add them some technical, but uh, anyway, we basically have this condition. And the uh, important thing is that uh, its potential is, uh, it is a double potential, as I said, and its bottom is uh, given by rho minus and rho plus, so something like this picture. And to obtain a, a motion by me curvature in the limit, we need this balance condition. So if w, the simple case is just p rho is equal to rho, this is a very uh, simple case. Then clearly uh, the derivative of p, the derivative of p is just one. So it uh, corresponds to, so we don't have this one. Then this balance condition implies that uh, this height, the, how to say, <laughs> the height of these breadths are equal. So each well has same depth. But in general, when it is uh, replaced with this condition. Anyway, to obtain a motion by mean curvature, we need this condition. And we assume it. So, and we need to take a scale for the rate function. And we just add a very big factor, one over epsilon, one over epsilon, and one over cu epsilon cubed, like this. And we take epsilon to zero limit. And as you see, as you see if, uh, if we take a Euler-Lagrange or the derivative, uh, how to say, uh, variation to this, functional, then we again get the uh, reaction diffusion equation like this, with this very big factor, 1 by epsilon squared. So we want to see the uh, limit as epsilon goes to zero of this guy. But clearly, we cannot do for a general phi, so we need to specify a shape of phi. So let us move to the following part. Again, let us give a uh, family of smooth hypersurface. So we consider general evolution of uh, hypersurfaces. At the moment, it is not uh, uh, governed by the motion by mean curvature. But anyway, we again denote the inward normal velocity by Vt and the mean curvature by kappa t. And uh, for the latter purpose, we need the uh, signed distance from this uh, surface. So we denote by d, and we take it uh, negative, like this. We take it, its signed distance negative in the interior of gamma t, and we take positive on the outside of gamma t. And the limit functional is the following. So we consider the, we introduce this action functional, SHC. So for each uh, hypersurfaces, gamma t, we compute this quantity. So we compute the uh, uh, inverse normal velocity and uh, mean curvature at each point. And mu and theta are uh, determined later. Anyway, these are just constants. And uh, then we, cons we calculate this integral. And the h is the uh, uh, surface measure. 
h d minus y d, d minus one dimensional uh, surface meter. Okay, uh, to specify the uh, shape of phi, as I said, this one, let me, let me introduce the following function. It is a step function determined by gamma t. And we, how to say, um, specify the uh, connection from the equilibria rho minus and rho plus. So uh, for this purpose, we consider the uh, this ordinary differential equation, which is nothing but the uh, stationary equation for the uh, evolution equation. So this is our reaction diffusion equation. Sorry, this is not zero. So this is nothing but the, uh, yeah, and with epsilon equal to one. So this one, this one. And we, uh, denote its solution with these uh, <coughs> boundary conditions. Clearly, this solution is uh, shift invariant, so we need to specify the values uh, at infinity and some point. So we take this one, which is uniquely, uh, which uniquely exists. And then we define this function phi epsilon for each bounded function q. The meaning is the following. following. So let us forget about the, this second term, q involving q. Then if we take epsilon to 0, then if d is positive, uh, in other words, if d is, uh, the point is a point belongs to the outside of gamma t, then it becomes infinity if we take epsilon to zero. Then u bar becomes rho plus, so it must be rho plus in the limit. And if not in the limit, it is given by rho minus. So phi epsilon converts to a step function determined by gamma t. Q is something of like, something like a perturbation or so if uh, there is no Q then there is a how to say this is just a small order but it appears this Q appears in the limit if we consider the if we define if we calculate the uh, late function mm -hmm. so we need to specify the choice of this part in other words we specify the uh, connect, how to say, we specify the connection between this equilibrium because this is, this vanished in the limit at, the, uh, at this form, at this level. But it appears in the limit. So uh, the physical constant, const, constant mu and theta are uh, uh, given by this a bit uh, messy procedure. Imp important thing is that we just introduced uh, V bar. So U bar is the solution to this equation. If we, ah, sorry, there is Laplacian here. So we just denote P U bar by V bar like this, and we consider a bit complicated. We introduce a bit complicated constants. Anyway, these constants appear in the limit. Anyway, let us let me skip for the moment. And our result is the following. So let us give a general evolution of smooth hypersurfaces gamma t, and let us define phi epsilon as before. Then we can show that for each nice Q, for each smooth Q, we can get the convergence of S epsilon of phi epsilon. But if we choose an optimal Q hat, then it, the limit is given by the previous quadratic energy. 
And this must be the uh, expected large deviation rate function. But uh, at the moment, we, have, we did not uh, prove it. Anyway, it must be the uh, large deviation rate function from our result. And this q hat must be the optimal choice among uh, smooth functions q. This is our result. Uh, this is our main result. <coughs> Uh, let me explain uh, some related results. Uh, this problem has been first studied for other, for some functional, this one. So this uh, energy uh, corresponds to the uh, large deviation rate function of the uh, stochastic Arenkan equation. And under suitable setting, if we take epsilon to zero, then the same limit appears in also for their case. If we consider epsilon and for some low epsilon, then it converts to this function with, a, with, const, with some constants determined from uh, its model. It has been done in, the, in their paper. And recently, uh, the same problem has been studied by Bertin Pisante for two models. Uh, the one is global dynamics for easing, mod easing global dynamics. And uh, another one, the other one is the uh, global plus Kawasaki process with this choice. So we have generalized the result to our quadrilinear setting. And in any case, uh, the limit functional is uh, given by this quadratic energy. And uh, this slide uh, remarks some difference between our model and the previous work. So the first one is that uh, in the case of the gravel dynamics with cut potentials, then uh, limiting constants can be uh, described in terms of the uh, st <coughs> equilibrium statical mechanics. But uh, it cannot be done for our model. So it, it's a big problem. And uh, another one is that they studied the, uh, this case, P is equal to U. Then V bar and U bar coincide. So we, they don't need to distinguish them. However, we need to distinguish V bar and U bar. And uh, yes, so we must care about the difference between U bar and V bar. So the analysis becomes more complicated. But it can be uh, translated to like this. So because U bar is solution to this equation, and if we denote this guy by V bar, then uh, V bar must satisfy this equation. Okay, in the rest of my talk, I'd like to give you a sketch of the proof. So, anyway, we need to uh, consider the limit of this guy. And uh, it, it is just uh, that the definition of S is this <laughs> supremum. However, using the external field like this, y using the solution to this equation, we can uh, rewrite its rate function like this. So we need to expand. But uh, this is quite uh, implicit because H is just a solution to this equation. So we don't have any information about this <laughs> integral at the moment. So we need to uh, expand phi or h in epsilon. For this purpose, uh, we introduce the expansion in the following form. A is a function in time and 
point, sorry, it must be gamma t. Uh, yeah, may, anyway, td to r. But uh, basically, x belong, yeah, anyway, it's a function like this. And here, important thing is the third variable correspond to the distance or scale distance from the gamma t. So epsilon d uh, <coughs> expresses a scale distance from a surface at time t. Then so-called Coelia formula, which is a variant of Fubini's theorem, so we can disintegrate this uh, integral like this. So it can be <coughs> split it like this. So gamma t is a point in the surface, and this integral uh, represents the distance from a signed distance from the gamma t. So this is nothing but uh, we disintegrate td to like this. So this is a so-called Coelia formula. And uh, if we have a nice <laughs> uh, spatial decay of this function, we can show that this converts to the, this function, this integral. This is, a, this is the first ingredient. So anyway, we need to uh, expand this quantity in epsilon. So we need to expand phi epsilon and h, h epsilon. The easier one is for h, phi epsilon. By the Taylor, we just uh, obtain this formula. But this is nothing but uh, this can be easily obtained by the Taylor expansion. Uh, much harder part is expansion for h epsilon. Because h is nothing but uh, h is just a solution to the solution to this PD. So for this purpose, we linearize this problem. Then we can get, correcting the first order term, we can get h1 hat, the first order must satisfy this equation. So its coefficient must given by this formula, must be given by this formula. And the LU bar is uh, some <laughs> linear, fun linear operator. As you see, this is nothing but the linear part of the of this guy here. If we linearize this part, then we can get this one. And note that if uh, uh, maybe maybe I should skip this slide. Anyway, after very simple, <laughs> like quite tedious computations, we can prove that it can be the desired object. The limit of the desired object is calculated like this for h q. And this, so we need to minimize in q. So we need to uh, solve the minimizing problem, min minimizing problem like this. But this is just linear in FQ, as, uh, how to, uh, not linear, this is quadratic in FQ. So we can obtain the uh, minimizer by using, uh, uh, by using Lagrangian multiplier method. Then opt choosing optimizer Q hat, then we can reach the uh, quadratic energy like this. This is a very uh, brief sketch of, the, of our proof. So this is the last slide of my talk. So I introduced, I examined several results. Uh, and uh, our main result is a sharp interface limit of the large dimensional rate function for the Graba plus gradient Kawasaki process. So which is nothing but a generalization of the previous, previous work to the quadrilinear setting. And as I said, uh, I'd like to study uh, in the future, <laughs> I'd like to attack uh, large deviation principle uh, for this, for the uh, multiple mean curvature limit. But at the moment, it is very difficult for me. So anyway, <laughs> I want to study this problem uh, as a future work. Yeah, thank you very much.
before the last talk. Are there any questions or comments? Thank you. Uh, thank, you uh, thank you very much for the uh, wonderful work. Uh, I have a naive question. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, does the, the, the geometrical aspect brings, uh, brings uh, to the, the, the inertial program? How, how, it make it, how does it make it progress? Thank you. Yeah, it's very naive because uh, because uh, we have not <laughs> considered in this work because we just study the uh, sharp interface limit for the rate function. So it is just a study for the calculus of variation. Uh, how to say? It? it is just a calculus for variations. So if we uh, we must capture the geometric aspect of the underlying system uh, for the large deviation problem. So we need to capture it uh, when we study the radiation problem, but we have not attacked. We have not attacked. So anyway, in the future we need it. As we need to understand uh, its uh, aspect, but uh, we have not done it yet. Yeah, there is uh, one result. I think uh, there is. By I, I, I think uh, your your student result. I, I'm not sure, but. Uh, there is another work by, I'm, I don't remember, but uh, there is another work which studies the radiation problem corresponding to the um, motion by mean curvature in 2D case. Uh, I, I don't remember. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He studies the radiation problem, but uh, in, their paper, in his paper, geometric, geometry is uh, very study, but uh, in this work, we have not. Sorry? It was the purpose of my question to, mm -hmm. to understand the geometric aspects of the paper. Maybe not in your work. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. It's a uh, future work. <laughs> Uh, thanks. Uh, I, I was wondering, in, in the first recurrence, just for the motion by mean curvature, uh, uh, you, you, you mentioned, uh, no, no the, the maybe your paper with uh, Funaki, for example, mm -hmm. uh, did you prove the, the convergence? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you, you prove the convergence for the motion by mean curvature in two parts, like uh, uh, first, you pull the hydrodynamic limit, and then uh, the, your parameter k go to infinity. No, no, we or you can prove both, uh, both. together. I yes, think. here k n depends on n. And how fast? Uh, that was my question. It is not so fast because it uh, at most log and okay, order. Okay, so uh, okay. yeah, we cannot, we couldn't improve it. Thank you. Anyway, log n bound, is log n growth is needed. And you would like something like that for, uh, for at the level of the large deviation? Ah, uh, yes, I. Is that, is that your aim? Yeah, but sorry, I, I'm not sure because yeah, I think uh, we, I think we, its growth is not needed, but. Uh, but you need some. Because so I. You, you need some k diverging to get to what you. I mean, that's what you. No. So, sorry, or, sorry. You, you need some large parameter to, to see a far, uh, even at the level of the large deviation. Oh, of course, to, of course. To see a sharp, so uh, would, have, would be this k, no? Yes. Epsilon is one over k or something. Like yes, yes, yes. So you need still some growth of k n, no? Yes, yes, yes. And in this paper, in this paper, it, it has been taken as, a, uh, it's just a polynomial. So it is, our method is in some sense not so robust, not so, we didn't cover all the case, mm -hmm. but uh, anyway, we can, we could uh, do by the entropy method, and uh, it is much more general to handle uh, uh, this something like this case. Okay. okay. Uh, <coughs> Pitch lower bound. Uh, ah, low, large division lower bound. Eh? Yes, you yeah. have some regularity. What regularity yeah. you may need here? Yeah, of course, it's also a <laughs> delicate problem because we just uh, consider smooth evolution in this paper. We have assumed that everything is smooth. So in this case, uh, there is no problem at the lower bound. But if we consider the large division problem or the gamma convergence in a proper sense, 
we need to care about the uh, um, singularity and uh, it must appear in the uh, analysis of the lower bound. For example, you expect that the nuclear ligation where uh, Droplets yes. Yes, droplets. yes, 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 we, we so must handle. Is it a function to be infinite in this case or, or not? Yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, in general revolution it must be described by a much more general. So this is just a, how to say it? Mm, most of my curvature is uh, just uh, described by a second order partial differential equation. However, in general it can be captured in a so-called Brackets, full black, full black flow using our geometric measure theory. So we need to invoke such a theory to attack uh, uh, LVP or gamma convergence. I, ex I expect. Anyway, and the low band is, <laughs> as you see, <laughs> as you know, yeah, it's very difficult. <laughs> okay, I think uh, it's a good time to proceed. Let's thank uh, <coughs> Atul Ozan again. <laughs>